the processor has various modes of instructions based on the instruction formats we have to give the addressing modes so addressing modes are given for the mode of instruction in which the processor has to access the data from memory or immediate data or from register or from any other way so based on this the addressing modes are divided and it also includes the formats of instructions that are designed for a certain processor if a processor has an 8 bit of arithmetic and logic unit so it needs an instruction which is capable of handling 8 bit of data if a processor is having 16 bit of arithmetic and logic unit similarly it needs a 16 bit of data to be handled by the instruction so based on the type of or the bits it has it is handled by the processor the addressing modes are designed in general the addressing modes are classified as specified immediate direct indirect register register indirect displacement or index and stack so as i said earlier the way in which the data can be accessed from memory or directly from a certain location or using a specific value of a certain memory address so as specified the memory address locations can be given in terms of the various operands so coming to the immediate addressing mode so here the value is value or the operand is a part of the instruction so operand is nothing but an address field so the address field here could be a, a data or directly an address field so what I mean here is the operand will directly sorry in immediately specify the data in your instruction so as an example given here we are adding something so add is a mnemonic and 5 is an operand so we are adding the contents of 5 to the accumulator so there might be a chance of getting a question here where is an accumulator so accumulator is already predefined we can also call it as an implicit so accumulators or the CPU registers which are mandatorily used while using arithmetic or logic instructions with any sort of processor so the instruction specified with only one operand obviously needs the details of the accumulator so the data in accumulator are predefined so there are some movement instructions or data transfer instructions to move the data into an accumulator so here we are adding the contents of 5 here 5 is not a data it is an address so based on the type of a processor this instruction will change in some of the processors 5 will be used as a immediate data but not an address so finally here 5 is an address field and the contents of this 5 are added to the accumulator let us take a contents of accumulator is 20 and the contents of 5 is 10 so finally the result will be 30 and it is again moved to the accumulator register what we are calling it as a CPU register so here there will not be any references to the memory so here every reference is directly made to an address which is immediately specified in your instruction so it is called as an immediate addressing mode so compared to other type of addressing modes while using any instruction in immediate addressing mode we can directly fetch the data so that is nothing but the number of memory cycles needed for fetching the immediate addressing mode is very less so that is the reason we can give here an advantage or a, a merit called as a faster accessing addressing mode but we can't access more number of operands with this we can give an a disadvantage or a demerit called as limited range so we can give only limited range of instructions here so consider a diagram of an instruction or an operate instruction format there will be an opcode for an immediate addressing mode and comparatively you will be having an operand so the operand and an opcode are directly specified or given here in the direct addressing mode the in the addressing in the instruction itself the address of a specific data value is directly specified in the instruction so as specified as given here the effective address is calculated by adding the values of your accumulator 
adding the values of your accumulator again to the accumulator so what happens here is we are looking at the address of accumulator for accessing or acquiring a certain operand so here it is called as addition of accumulator again with an accumulator so here the contents of accumulator is again added to the accumulator and finally the result is stored in accumulator so we can call it as a single memory reference instruction so here we are simply accessing a single memory location by identifying it with a designated name or a value here in an example we have used it with a name called as a which is called as accumulator also called as a cpu register so with the use of this direct addressing instructions there is no need of any further calculations that are needed to be done for getting or accessing the data from a certain part of your memory location so that is the advantage here and it also needs a very limited address space so this could be a, a pictorial representation or diagrammatic representation of direct addressing diagram direct addressing mode so the op according to the opcode the address of accumulator is accessed and through the address of accumulator the operand which is stored in the memory location is taken care and finally the address the data value of an accumulator is again added to the data value of accumulator and finally the result is stored in accumulator so next coming to the indirect addressing mode indirect addressing mode is little bit contradictory compared to the direct addressing mode so here the direct addressing mode is something li like accessing the data directly from an accumulator so here in the indirect addressing mode you are trying to give the address of an accumulator again in some other operand so that operand can be directly specified or indirectly specified if we are specifying that directly then it is called as direct addressing mode if we are specifying that indirectly then it is called as indirect addressing mode so here the effective address is given as the data stored in accumulator added to the pointer value which contains that which which is contained in that operand so here the address is given as let us uh, before that let us take of the example add accumulator which is stored in a parenthesis so what happens here is we are adding the contents of the cell pointed by the contents of accumulator with the contents that are specified by the effective address so the result could be something like the effective address has been specified with a pointer to an operand so here in the diagram the address which is specified by accumulator is pointed by an operand and this operand value is again added to the value of your address so here finally the data of accumulator is added with the accumulator again by an indirect value as specified in the previous slide so there we can make it as complex something like indirect indirect addressing mode that is inside 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 parenthesis so we are using multiple parenthesis so with the use of multiple parenthesis we are making it as a nested or cascaded indirect addressing mode so comparatively with your direct addressing mode indirect addressing mode is a little bit slower type of addressing mode but compare but while uh, designing a processor or a microprocessor an indirect addressing mode is not mostly used as it is much more slower as it makes multiple memory access to find an operand so if some memory operand is trying to be access some data if it is failed we are finally a, we are finally not getting rid of the execution of an instruction so with this statement we can say that indirect addressing mode is more complex than the direct addressing mode so next comes with the register addressing mode in the register addressing mode here we are directly accessing here we are directly accessing the data from the registers so that is in the register addressing mode the register values are direct the values are directly specified in the register next coming to the register address register indirect addressing mode in the register indirect addressing mode the value is specified in the register and in that register the address is specified indirectly so we are getting the operand value by indirectly specifying the address through with the help of a register so coming to the displacement addressing mode displacement addressing mode is somewhat related to register indirect addressing mode but along with the register indirect we are adding the displacement value which is to be moved 
some points further so that is called as a displacement addressing mode <coughs> in a relative addressing mode we are trying to give a relative address compared to a address value which is specified through an operand that could be a register or indirect index register or an indirect register so similarly we can change the values of this indirect address but the, with the use of this relative address or displacement and the way we are using this indirect register values so these indirect register values could be base register or index register anything so based on the type of use of these registers it is classified again into base register addressing mode as well as indirect addressing mode so by using so we can conclude here that we are having the above various addressing modes and finally we can conclude these addressing modes can also be used as combinations of one with the other so at the end we can also use some other type of addressing mode based on the data structures we are having called as a stack addressing mode so here in the stack addressing mode finally we are trying to get the values with the help of a pointer value called as a stack pointer <coughs>